Hey everybody, I'm here at the Cliffs of Moher in the west coast of Ireland, one of the amazing wonders of the world, and I'm going to be showing you how to use Render Studio today. So why don't you come back to the house with me, we'll fire up the computer, and away we go. Hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the Render Studio overview. Um, I'd like to explain a little bit about what it is in case you uh, have not come across it yet. Uh, Render Studio IRA is a content package for DAS Studio 4.9. Uh, what it does is it simulates a professional photographic studio and it comes with a huge set of lights, backdrops and projectors uh, there are plenty of images here that I'm showing you that give you a good idea about you know what you can really do with the program. Um, I've been making Render Studio programs for a long time now and it originally started where I, I was using Vue and I wanted to use poser uh, figures in Vue uh, but in a non-environmental situation so I built myself a, a load of studio lights uh, in view and uh, that kind of exploded from there and I got my first render studio product out in the runtime DNA store um, I, I, it was very successful uh, I didn't expect it to be and um, I very quickly went on to make the very first render studio for Poser and there's been a couple of iterations since then but the latest one is uh, render studio for DAS Studio 4.8 or 4.9 and um, it seems to be very well received so let's uh, crack on and uh, take a look at what you can do with render studio and what it's all about so here we are here in DAS Studio and now I have uh, loaded up already um, a Genesis 3 female. Uh, when you install Render Studio iRay, you're going to find it in your DAS 3D library here uh, under Light Presets and then it'll be under Render Studio and Render Studio Base ignore this little one here that's just something i was working on um, now inside the render studio base um, library you're going to have all the different parts of render studio separated out into categories so we have backdrops uh, cameras lights render settings and scenes so what I'd like to do for the first part of this is show you a little bit about the backdrops. Uh, we have two backdrops in Render Studio. Uh, one is a floor and wall. Um, if I load that in, you'll get a better idea. I'll just zoom out here. And you can see that it, it's uh, a pretty big simulation of a studio floor and wall so if we just knock that out for a second uh, load in the infinity cove for those of you who don't know what an infinity cove is it's it's a curved wall that is used in many uh, photographic studios and what it does is it gives the impression of an infinite background where you can't actually tell where the background ends uh, so it kind of fades into the distance what we're going to be looking at here is um, the floor and wall prop so I'm going to just quickly turn that off in fact I'll delete it and then we'll put the floor and wall prop back on now um, it comes both the floor and wall and the infinity cove come with a massive amount of uh, options for textures and materials so if you go if you open up the backdrops um, uh, library and go into materials IRA you'll find that there are um, options here for the the floor and wall and we have uh, 
the these would be for the actual wall itself so you have bokeh um backdrops which are very popular in photography you always see those um you know those kind of out of focus spheres in the background when they use um a very low depth of field on the camera that blurs out the background then we have brick and stone backgrounds canvas like you would get in uh, a you know a photographic studio you like a roll of canvas sometimes it can be kind of old and you got grungy uh, backdrops here um, we have a whole lot of matte backdrops just in case you want something plain it goes from plain white to black to dark gray to green blue purple etc then there are a whole lot of smoke backdrops uh, well actually there's only three but um, they're actually very versatile and then there are a couple of techno backdrops uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to load one of these smoke backdrops onto the background and to do that we want to make sure um, in our scene here we have the floor and wall selected and then we're going to go to the surfaces tab I'm uh, going to open up the floor and wall here and select background and then we're going to load one of the smoky backgrounds onto the, onto the prop here and there you see we have a, a nice smoky background so now that we've we we, we know how to uh, load the backgrounds we'll take a look at the, the floor um, there are two types of floors there are the textured floors uh, where you get you, you get like um, wood uh, planks there's a couple of options there for wood planks there's tiles there's concrete uh, there's old concrete so a lot of things that you might find in a studio situation also I included a set of reflective uh, floors so you know you might have one of those surfaced floors that you know Show, shows the reflections uh, and they they are to varying degrees some only show a slight reflection some some show a pretty strong one but for this i think we're just going to concentrate on the um the textured so we've got our background our floor and wall background here selected in the scene uh, and instead of selecting the background in the surfaces tab we're going to select floor so well, let's load up floor nine which is a nice wood floor see what that looks like there you go so let's zoom in a bit on that uh get a better idea there see it's uh it's a tiling texture they're all tiling textures for the floors uh and they're pretty good tiles um it, it, it it's pretty hard to tell that they're actually tiled so here we are we, we we've had a look at the the, the background here um, the floor and wall background so we're going to leave that up uh, and then we're going to start looking at the cameras and lights um but before i go into that there is one important thing that i need to tell you about render studio and that is um before you start uh building a scene or rendering a scene at least uh, especially when you're setting up the lights you need to go to your render settings uh, tab here and you need to go to the environment section and the environment mode here it's very important uh, you need to set it to scene only uh, if we had the the dome and scene when we rendered it, it would have the dome light casting light and we wouldn't be getting a true representation of what the lights are actually doing. So you gotta make sure it's set to scene only. Okay, so that, let's go back to the content library. So we have looked at the, the backdrops and we set ourselves up a backdrop. Let's think about a camera. Now there are a whole lot of cameras here. Um, in fact there are 19 cameras 
and um, they vary from um, a straight full body camera uh, to um, to a head and shoulders camera, mid body camera, uh, ground cameras. So if your figures are on the ground, sitting on the ground or lying on the ground, you can use one of those cameras. We have some wide angle cameras, full body camera. We have cameras from below. So I'll just load some of these up and uh, give you a, an idea what's going on there. So there's a view from below and uh, here's another view from below. Um, we have the full body camera here. Um, we have the ground camera. Obviously we're not going to see uh, much there because she's not actually sitting on the ground. We've got cameras from above. I particularly like these. Um, so, you know, you, you, you can do a lot with these. Uh, these are floor cameras. The camera is actually on the floor itself, looking right up at the model. Uh, and there's a center one. And then you've got a fisheye camera, which is really distorted and ultra-wide. But it, it can be useful for, for, for you know, uh, some sort of, of a specific render, you know, where, where you, 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 know, you really want to demonstrate a certain kind of mood. Um, but for now, I think what we're going to use, we're going to use the full body camera. And just going to pull her out a little there. So, what we have is um, the full body camera here, and I'm going to show you that I've set up an auxiliary viewport here. Uh, now, if you just give this uh, a second or two, it should actually start rendering. Ah, it won't start rendering because I haven't added any lights. So uh, it would help if I'd added lights. So we'll just switch back to the perspective view for the time being while I set up the lights and we can we can take a look at that. Uh, we'll let it render there in the background. So um, let's take a look at what we have in the lights, which is obviously the most important part of the whole product. Um, if you don't have light, you don't have a render. So what we have, we have sets of background lights here. We've got two types of background light. The most important one here is the background wall light. And what that does is when you, you load it up, let's uh, take a look here at the perspective view. And we'll uh, select that. Now, do you notice that this background wall light here is actually connected to a controller? Now, this is very important here. If you see, we have the light is here, beaming down on the background, and we have a controller prop here. Now, what we need to do, I'll just move this out of the way, is we need to... Um, select the controller prop and go to parameters and we have this dial here called arc rotate and what that does is it rotates the light sorry wrong dial uh, arc rotate it rotates the light so now if I bring in this little view here you will be able to actually see what's happening uh, when it starts rendering so we have the, the light now pointing down this way. So if I move the light the other way, across there, and just give it a second, and see, it's pointing in the other direction. Pretty cool. Um, so this other light here is basically, basically a light that will light the entire background. And... Uh, basically if, if you want the background background to be very lit you would use that one there are no options for obviously rotating it uh, or anything like that because you don't need to but if we, we if we stay on this background light here we get a selection of different types of beam presets now in order to use these beam presets we need to select the background wall and light and we need to go to the lights uh, tab here. 
So we've got our light selected. So let's try a, me a, a medium beam diffused. See how that looks, how it changes the, uh, see how wide it is now. Uh, and it's lighting the in entire scene. Um, uh, I'm gonna just quickly change to the full body camera um, and see, now there you see we have a, a nice uh, moodily lit background. Now we can, we can change that to a very thin hard beam and see what that looks like. So you get an idea there. See, it's now rendering. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It's almost like a volumetric light in the background. So there you have the um, the background lights. There's a, a good amount of uh, variation there. Uh, and of course, you can play with these settings yourself and um, you know see what you get. So on uh, upwards and onwards, so one of the biggest things here in uh, Render Studio is there is a whole slew of mesh lights, um, from fill lights uh, to hair lights to key lights, rim lights, and side lights, and of course soft lights. So what we're going to take a look at today is setting up a very simple lighting scenario. So to do that, we're going to start off with, I'm going to just turn that background light off for a second. And we're going to start off with a, a key light. Let's try a hard key light. So we're just going to load that key light in there. Give it a chance to render. Okay. So now we have a very nice key light there and if I zoom in actually no what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go back to cameras and I'm going to select something uh, I'm going to select the upper body camera so we'll just give that a second to render now and you'll get a better idea see now the idea of a key light is that it lights the subject from the side about 45 degrees to the side and slightly above the subject and it gives uh, a nice light to the face and, and and some shadow detail we call we call that modeling in photography so if we take a look here at the perspective view we can actually see where the key light is situated so there's our key light there it's a mesh light and if you take a, a look at that mesh light you can see it it has a reflector dish and a light in the center now these lights are incredible they can actually be morphed into anything you want so if we go to the shaping uh, tab uh, with the key light selected we can actually change the size of the emitter. Um, we can change the size of the bowl. It can be a very, very small bowl, very big bowl. The bigger the bowl, the softer the light. Um, we can make it parabolic. Oh, oh, there we go. And a small bowl. Small bowl is now making big bowl because of this other setting I have here. Um, so you can see there that we have plenty of different settings. Um, we can move all sorts of uh, different ways. So that is how we we change the structure of the light to give a diff different kind of effect. So we have our key light there. So now what we need to do is we might want to reduce the, um, the shadows on the key light. So to do that, we're going to use a fill light. Now, 
there are two rules of thought here. With this key light here, the key light is situated off to the right. So if we just take a look here, you can see how the key light is to the right and slightly above the G3 female there. So now if we load a uh, fill light, there are two ways we can do it. We can load one in the center or we can load one to the left, which will counteract the light on the right and lighten the shadows. I personally prefer the, the center uh, mode. So let's just try that and see what happens. There's a good chance it will actually be too bright, but that's a very important thing in Render Studio. Okay, it's a little too bright, but you can see there how it's lightened the shadow area. So it's a bit too bright. So what do we do when we want to change the intensity of the light? Well, if we select the, the fill light here, and we go to surfaces. We go to surfaces, we don't go to lights, we go to surfaces because it's a mesh light. It's not a standard parametric light, uh, which is um, one of the lights you would select up here. So in the surfaces tab, we select the fill light center, which is the light that we're gonna work on. And we see emitter here, we select emitter, and then we select emission. Now what we have here is a tab called luminance and um, we also have luminance efficacy. Now luminance efficacy uh, and luminance work together uh, in, in that studio. Well the way I've got them set up and it controls the softness of the light or the hardness of the light. But to control the luminance of the light we want to be taking a look at this figure here, luminance. Now it's set to 2000 at the moment that's 2000 watts so it sounds it seems pretty high but figures can be quite high in um, in 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 DAS studio for luminance so let's try changing it to one and see what happens let's have a look at our render here and see if, if it makes it any better I can instantly see that that is quite a bit better so I still think it's slightly too bright. So let's try changing it. It's set to uh, 1000 at the moment. Let's try changing it to 750 and see what it looks like. That's much better. So we have, we have lift off there. So now what I'd like to do is show you how to add another light. Now, just move that out of the way. Um, in, in, a, in a basic studio setup, it, it, it can be quite important, even in a basic studio, to use rim lights. Now, there are two types of rim light here. There are mesh lights and there are parametric rim lights. Now we've already dealt with two mesh lights, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the um, the parametric rim lights. They come with a lot of different colors as well, which is it's kind of cool. So our key light is, is on the right. Uh, our fill light is in the center. So why don't we try putting a rim light on the, the left? see how how that works out okay so let's double click on there and we can see the effect that the rim light is having uh, it, it's made what it's doing is it's making the figure stand out from the background now this is a very obviously a very important aspect of rendering you know you don't want your figure to look like it's pasted on the background uh, rim lights can be great in many ways because they, they can do that, but they can also light the hair. Um, and, you, you know, you can do some really nice little effects. Uh, so let's try um, putting a color on the uh, rim light. So the rim light is actually a parametric light. So 
sorry, photometric light. So we're going to make sure that the rim light is selected in the, in the scene tab and light is selected in the lights tab. And we're going to go to rim lights, materials, IRA. And we're going to load, uh, let's see, um, let's try something crazy and try a purple one and see, see what effect that has. There you go. Now, very luminous purple. Let's try something a little bit more subtle. Um, let's try this purple here. Let's see how that one works out. And that's much, much better. Uh, and we can do the same with, um, with other colors too. We have blue one here. Um, which which would be quite could be quite nice because it might counteract the warmth of the other lights. Yeah, that, that works really well. Um, so there we have a nice basic uh, portrait setup for um, Render Studio. So before we close out, what I'd like to to do is to show you some of the other parts of Render Studio. Um, that uh, such as the utilities. Now, if you if you notice these um, these lights here, these mesh lights can 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 really get in the way sometimes, especially you know if if I wanted to do a shot like this. Well, what am I going to do about this mesh light here? So let's select the fill light there. Yeah, and let's use this. Um, utility here which will hide the mesh light well first of all we have to go to surfaces and we have to make sure that the fill light casing and emitter are both selected so we're going to just hide that there you go they're gone they won't show in the render anymore but if you need to work on them i say they won't show in the render their effect will show in the render but their actual um, physical geometry won't but if you want to Reshow them, you just use the show tab there. So that's a pretty nice little addition to Render Studio. So what we're going to do is we're going to just quickly uh, close down this section and then I'm going to show you a little bit about the scenes. Be right back. So one of the really, really cool things about Render Studio is that it comes with a selection of scenes. So if you go to the Scenes tab um, under the Render Studio base, Render Studio actually comes only with five scenes. Uh, the rest of these scenes here are from a follow-up package that I did called Render Studio Scenes. And that comes with an extra 10 scenes. And um, most of them are of the images that I used in the promotional renders for Render Studio. And I added a few more uh, in the Render Studio scenes package. Um, the beauty of it is, is that you can, you can set your, your, your figure up um, you can clothe your figure, you can uh, pose your figure, and then you can decide, oh, how do I want this to look? How do I want it to be lit? Um, and what the scenes do is they give you a great starting point. And they will load everything that I used in the scene itself. Uh, to create the render. Now, obviously I can't include the poses that I used because uh, they were created by other content creators. But, you know, looking at the thumbnails themselves, you can actually get an idea of how I pose them and how the actual um, figure will relate to the lighting in the scene. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use one of the scenes here called multi-gobo fx um, and what that does is it will demonstrate another cool feature 
in Render Studio is that Render Studio comes with projectors. Now it comes with three projectors. The projector above projects down from the front onto the scene. The projector front projects directly in front of the figure or figures in the scene and the projector wall only projects on the wall itself. Now there are a lot of different um, textures that you can put onto your projectors. Um, so you you know and you can also add your own you can make your own uh, images in uh, Photoshop or whatever to the application you use and you can just hook them up to the projector themselves just like you would add a texture to anything else but if we go back to the scenes tab here one thing is it's very important to, to do is when you um, load a scene it will you have to right click on it and then you select merge into scene now if we look at the perspective view here we can see that there are various elements in the scene here now we have the genesis figure we have the floor and wall prop we have the projector the background projector and that has a a mesh a square plane of mesh uh, attached to it let's see if we can zoom in on there and you can just see it's it's semi-transparent so there's the light and it's projecting through this this mesh here uh, which actually is the part of the projector that you hook the texture up to um, to actually um, project it so if you want to load a a new um, image onto onto that you would select the gobo you would select gobo in the services tab and you would scroll down to glossy color this is the channel that it has to be loaded into so then you would just click on the icon there and then just browse to the image that you've made. Now, the only thing I'll say is the image has to be square and fairly big. All my projectors are 2000 by 2000 pixels. This gives them a pretty good resolution. So let's go back to our Genesis figure there. Now, we also have uh, a camera here from below and if we can click on there that doesn't look right <laughs> so let's have a look here there's our projection there so if we select the camera from below here there that's better so if we just move her around a little there you'll get a good idea of of what's happening in the scene okay here's the projections kicking in now now there are two projectors there's also a front projector which has the same texture on the gobo you can see that here oh no tell a lie it has a different texture on the go on the gobo it has this nice water uh, reflection texture here so what we also have is a key light a hard key light which is lighting the figure from the right and the side of the figure is in shadow and we have a specular eye light now the specular eye light is very important because what that does is it gives us nice reflections in the eyes and you can see that light here I zoom out sorry specular highlight there and that's pointing at the figure there now you'll notice that it's not actually pointing properly at the figure so what 
is important and Daz doesn't seem to hold this information is that we need to point the light at the figure so we go to the parameters tab and we go to the miscellaneous sub tab and where it says point at here we click on there we select our genesis figure here we open that up and we select hip and we're going up the hierarchy here up the body abdomen lower abdomen upper chest lower chest upper i wish i knew scripting i i, I would do a script that just pointed it directly where i wanted to point so after chest upper we have the neck so we go neck lower neck upper and head so we're going to point it at the head now hopefully when i click accept you'll see this part of the light here move to the head yes so not sure if we have a texture on on the figure here that will actually show the specular eye lights you actually need certain shaders on the eyes and this is the default um, g3 female you can actually see the uh, in the preview there where the actual um, specular highlights are falling in the eyes so let's just zoom right in there no you can't actually see him in in this um setup but what i'll do is i'll do another short tutorial on how to set up the specular eyelights in the eyes correctly um, but as you can see this uh is working out quite nicely as to what the actual icon itself looks like if i turn the figure a little bit there uh, we get a better idea of how it's looking like the icon and all that you have to do is actually pose the figure to your own liking and away you go see there you can see that water reflection projection and then this spiral reflection uh, projection here casting on the figure past the figure onto the background given this beautiful almost zebra skin effect to the figure so there you have the the scenes um, and they're well worth experimenting with you can learn a lot from them you can actually um, not just um, a simple way to get look or the lighting that you want but you can deconstruct them and find out more about how i made them what their settings are and basically uh, you learn a lot by using the scenes and don't forget and check out the scenes package for uh, render studio ira at daz uh, just uh, go to daz3d.com slash calm dash dash calm dash Jackson and it'll take you directly to my store um, where you can take a look at the products yourself and store page and have a closer look at the renders so that's about it for now and I hope that this has given you a good insight into what render studio is about I will be doing more tutorials about various various aspects of render studio and um, also tutorials about all sorts of things to do with um, DAS and um, post work and you know uh, all sorts of little tricks that I know I will pass them all on to you in my tutorials but for now that's it I hope you've enjoyed it and see you next time